In this video, I'll be explaining some things about the IBMYP Individuals and Societies Task 1 exam that you may want to know. So Task 1 normally focuses on the topic of investigation and the questions that they may ask will be around the evaluation of investigations in which the question will already give you a conducted investigation that you have to evaluate so you wouldn't be creating an investigation of your own. Following that, they'll normally ask you to create your own investigation based off of an area of interest in which you'll normally be formulating a research question. You'll be justifying that research question. You'll be explaining a challenge that you could experience during the research, as well as methods of data collection and recording. So starting off with the evaluation of investigation, if we look at the mark scheme, it says that the student should be able to explain the strengths of the process and results of the investigation which will give you three marks. You should also be able to explain the limitations of the process and results of the investigation. And the student should be able to provide a detailed overall appraisal of the investigative process. So the strengths have three marks, the limitations have three marks, and the overall appraisal has two marks as well. The one mistake that students occasionally make is that they focus too much on the results of the investigation, whereas it's safer and more common to talk about the process itself. While you can't talk about the results, normally it's the process that's most important, such as like methods of data collection, methods of um, recording the data. That's more important rather than the actual results, unless it actually matters in relation to the type of research being taken place. And another thing is, although it mentions that you could definitely have more than one strength or limitation, one strength and one limitation is sufficient to score all the marks because what they're looking at is the quality and depth of your explanation, not more so the number of strengths and the number of limitations that you're able to identify. So because of time constraint, it's always okay to just go with one strength and one limitation, but explain each strength and limitation to a great degree of detail. So the first thing that you would always have to look at when you, when you want to think up of strengths and weaknesses would be the method of data collection. So one thing to look out for is whether or not there's a range of primary and secondary sources, because when you have a range of both, that's generally what makes the research good. Primary sources may include interviews, questionnaires, surveys, observations, and experiments. And secondary sources may include statistics, databases, analysis of research, explanation of data, anything that is not original but stems from another source. And the sources must also be relevant to the research question. The types of sources must be, must be relevant. So you can't just say you'll be exploring a database when, for example, if you're doing a new type of research, you can't be exploring a database. So maybe you want to conduct an experiment instead. So the sources has to be relevant to what the research is about. And it also has to be a credible source. So one thing that you should take note of is some you, uh, it's a good idea to not say stuff like you'll be looking at this type of, you'll be looking at articles. Instead, it's good to say you'll be looking at databases because these technical terms actually do make some of difference. And another thing is the scope of sources must be relevant. For instance, if you're going to be doing a survey or interview or something like that, you should also look at how many people were asked, how many questions were asked, what type of questions were asked, were the questions open-ended or closed-ended. Open-ended questions generally give you more detail and actual thought process to the answer. But if the type of investigation requires a larger number of respondents, more so than quality responses, closed-ended questions may be better for that specific research. And you could also look at whether the interviewees have expertise to answer the questions. So the type of explanation you give also depends on the type of research that's being taken place and what the purpose of the research is. One thing that students don't really take notice of is that they don't really focus on the purpose of the research because a lot of your justification has to be based on what the research should be about, what you should gain from the research. Another thing is data recording. It could be in the form of a report, presentation, infographic, but whatever form of recording it is, it has to suit, once again, the purpose of the investigation. And it's always good to see that sources are included, reference sources. And it's always more credible if the sources are recent and not outdated. That could always be a strength that you talk about. But at times, it may be difficult to determine 
where at times you can't be saying that the source is outdated. Like for, for instance, if you get some sort of source that is from 2017, but the research is from that time period from 2017, you can't be saying that the sources are outdated because when it was conducted at that time, it was still recent. So you can't be saying now it's 2022, so it's outdated. So you also have to look at context. So at times it's easy to make mistakes when referring to references. So it's always better to look at methods of data collection and stuff like that. And of course, just an overall thing, if you look at what is effective research, it has to address the context purpose of the investigation, should include credible data collection methods to gather, gather data. There should always be some conclusion. It can't be vague. You should always be answering the research question by the end of the research. And there should always be, if there are any limitations to the investigation, it should always be mentioned. And if possible, there could also be links to extra sources. So these are things that make an effective research. And if you see things like this, this could always be an explanation as to why the research is effective. So whenever you get an investigation, a few questions you could ask yourself is, how was the data collected? To what extent was the data collection method useful to answer the specific research question? You always look at the context. What type of data was collected? Is the source of data reliable? Is it from experts or is it from people that have no idea, have like no expertise in the topic? And do the results completely answer the research question or not? It could be the most reliable research. It could be amazing. But if it doesn't answer the research question by the end, the research is not effective. And the structure you could use to answer these types of questions is just mentioned, OK, a strength of the investigation process or results is this. And this is a strength or limitation because. And you do the same thing for limitations. And by the end, you have to mention, is the investigative process effective, just satisfactory, or not effective? You'll have to mention each one. And then you give a simple outline as to your reasoning based off of the strengths and weaknesses that you previously described. Since this is only two marks, you don't have to give, give an explanation that's as detailed as your strengths or limitations, but there should still be an outline. And the next thing would be formulating a clear and focused research question. The mark scheme mentions that the, form, the research question formulated by the student should be both clear, focused, and connected to one of the areas for further investigation. And you'll be getting two marks for the research question because you just have to state the research question, no explanation behind it. The first thing you'll have to look out for is to you have to know that you'll only be focusing on one issue, one area of further research. It depends on the question, but some questions may they may give you a few options on the area of further research. So you should be able to know that you should only focus on one because the whole point for research question is to be clear. So if you focus on more than one area, that will no longer be there. And another thing you have to think of is that a good research question requires analysis and thinking. So it shouldn't be that easy to answer. It shouldn't be something you can easily find from a simple Google search. So one way to ensure that this requirement is fulfilled is to always start your question to with to what extent. To what extent is this that it usually helps to ensure that there's always a debate behind your question that there are many things you could talk about and that there's no fixed answer. So this is a good command term to start your research question with. And of course, it should be specific and focused. One way you could do this is to always see if you could include the name of a specific person, if you could include the name of a location, if you could include a time period or a country or anything that makes it specific and focused. And of course, there should be no clear there should be no vague words. It should be as clear as possible. These are generally things that you can think about when formulating a clear and focused research question. Next would be justifying the relevance of your research question, in which at least one argument or factor should be considered in detail, as long as, as uh, along with reasoning as to why the research question is relevant. You'll normally be getting four marks for answering this type of question. So I've generally outlined the structure that you could follow in order to get all the four marks. As long as you answer each question, you'll probably, you'll always get four marks. So first you'll have to mention, okay, what is your research question about? Give a brief outline of it. 
Next, state the area of research that your question is related to. As I mentioned before, there may be some options, so you should be stating it. And you should be providing reasons as to why your research question is connected to this uh, area, as well as why your research question and the topic you focus on is worthy of investigation. What's the benefit? What's the purpose of that investigation? And what type of in uh, information will you be able to get through your investigation? And to what extent is that information uh, necessary for your investigation? And who will your findings benefit? At times, for the benefit for who you're buying findings and benefit, at times it can be found in the situation given to you for the investigation. They could tell you this investigation is to help the government or something like that. So you should always take note of that because when it's given to you, you should always follow that. But when it's not given to you, you can make an assumption as to who it'll benefit and why. And next would be explaining a challenge to overcome during the research. And for this, uh, question. One challenge has to be considered in detail with comprehensive reasons given. So one challenge is more than enough. As long as it's explained properly, you'll still be able to get all four marks. So the first thing you have to do is mention what the challenges that you have to overcome and mention why it's a challenge and then how the quality of your investigation will be affected by this challenge as well as what you would possibly do to mitigate or overcome the challenge. So it doesn't necessarily have to be overcome, but it has to be reduced to some extent at least. And again, one mistake the students always make is they include challenges that are way too general, as in challenges that could apply to any type of research. There's, there's not enough time. I'm a student, so I can't do this. It should always be something that is quite specific to that research. For instance, if the research is has to be done in a different country. You could say something about language barriers. And for example, if you have to get access to some important documents, you could say you don't have access to it. So just something that makes it more connected to that specific research rather than having a general challenge that you could write for every single research you do. And just some methods of data collection and data recording that you can take note of. A common question is to always ask what method of the what's your data collection method and what's your data recording method for your investigation so you'll have to choose accordingly based off of your investigation but generally you can collect data using interviews questionnaires surveys observations experiments statistics and databases and you could record data through spreadsheets note taking or summarizing video audio recording tables and graphs and that would generally be all that you would have to know to answer most questions in task one. Of course, it'll take some practice to get used to it, but these are just some things that you could keep in mind. Thank you for watching.